Hi, I'm, I'm Dave Staples from Hanover, New Hampshire, and I've got two questions for you. Uh, first, I'd like to hear your thoughts on selling security short and what your experience has been recently and over the course of your career. It's an interesting uh, uh, item to study because it's, I mean, it's ruined a lot of people. Uh, it's, it, it is the sort of thing that you can go broke doing. Bob Wilson, there's famous stories about him and Resorts International. He didn't go broke doing, in fact, he's done very well subsequently. But, but being short something where your loss is unlimited is quite different than being long something uh, that, you, that you've already paid for. Uh, and it's tempting. You see way more stocks that are dramatically overvalued in your career than you will see stocks that are dramatically undervalued. I mean, they're, they're, it's the nature of securities markets to occasionally promote various things to the sky so that securities will frequently sell for five or ten times what they're worth and they will very, very seldom sell for 20% or 10% of what they're worth. So, it, therefore, you see these much greater discrepancies between price and value uh, and on the overvaluation side. So you might think it's easier to make money on short selling. And all I can say is uh, uh, it hasn't been for me. I don't think it's been for Charlie. It is a very, very tough business because of the fact that you face unlimited losses and because of the fact that people that have overvalued stocks, very overvalued stocks, are fre frequently on some scale between promoter and crook. And that's why they get there. And once they're, and, and they also know how to use that very valuation to bootstrap value into the business because if you have a stock that's selling at 100 that's worth 10, obviously it's to your interest to go out and issue a whole lot of shares. And if you do that, when you get all through, the value can be 50. In fact, there's a lot of chain letter type stock promotions that are sort of based on the implicit assumption that the management will keep doing that. And if they do it once, and build up to 50 by issuing a lot of shares at 100 when it's worth 10. Now the, now the value is 50 and people say, well, these guys are so good at that, let's pay 200 for it or 300 and then they can do it again and so on. It's not usually that quite that clear in their minds, but that's, that's the basic principle underlying a lot of stock promotions. And if you get caught up in one of those that is successful, you can, you know, you can run out of money before the promoter runs out of ideas. In the end, they, they, they almost always work. I mean, I, I would say that of the things that we have felt like shorting over the years, the batting average is very high in terms of eventual, uh, they, they would work out very well eventually if you held them through. But it is very painful, and it's, it's in, our, in my experience, it's a whole lot easier to make money on, on, on the long side. I had one situation, actually an arbitrage situation when I was in, was when I moved to New York in 1954, so it was about June or July of 1954, that involved a surefire type transaction, an arbitrage transaction that had to work. But there was a technical wrinkle in it, and I was short something. And I felt like a, for, for a short period of time, I, uh, I, was, uh, I felt like uh, Finova was feeling last fall. I mean, it, uh, it was very unpleasant. Uh, you can't make, in my view, you can't make really big money doing it because you can't expose yourself to the loss that, that uh, would be there if you did do it on a big scale. 